Source transformation is a method used to simplify circuits by transforming a voltage source in series with a resistor into a current source in parallel with the same resistor, or vice versa. The purpose of this method is to enable series parallel transformations that would not otherwise be possible in order to simplify a circuit hopefully down to either a single node pair or single loop circuit which can be solved by elementary means. Here I'm going to illustrate how to use the source transformations tutorial in Circuit Tutor with the interactive circuit editor. So I'm launching the module and I'm going to show an example of an easy level problem for illustration. So here's the circuit we're trying to simplify and since we're going to use source transformations we must always go into the circuit editor first to do that. So I click on the simplify circuit button. This brings up some instructions and I would recommend certainly that you uh, look at these instructions and read them as necessary. Uh, remember the old saying, when all else fails, read the instructions. Okay, so here is the circuit that we're going to try to simplify. And one of the things you'll notice that's a little different here is that we have an image of the circuit as it exists now in this little pop-up box. And that's to help us remember what it looks like when we start making changes it may be easy to forget what the circuit originally looked like, so this will be your reference, and it'll always show the most recent correct circuit that you had in the process of transforming it. Uh, if this box gets to be in your way, you can move it around. It will automatically adjust its position to try to stay out of the way, but you can always move it manually as well. So I'm going to begin here by looking at this circuit. And one of the things um, we have to keep in mind is that we can only transform things if neither the source nor the passive element involved has a SOT quantity. If they have a SOT quantity, we cannot transform them. In this particular problem, there is no SOT quantity on the, on the voltage source in series with this resistor or on this voltage in series with this resistor. Only the central resistor has a SOT current. Therefore, we can translate either one of the ones on the side here. In fact, we're going to need to trans uh, transform both of those. So I'm going to begin by transforming the voltage source into a current source. In order to do that, I'll first click on this element and change it into a current source. There are several ways of doing that. One is to right click, choose the element type menu, and select current source, which I could do here. Or I could select it, turning it red, and then simply click on this current source icon on the editor form. Now, it's put in a random polarity, and I need to make sure that it has this correct polarity. And remember the rule when doing source transformations is that you want to have the same voltage produced by this current as was originally produced here, which means that the current needs to go the opposite direction. So I'm going to immediately re reverse the uh, current direction of that pol uh, or the polarity of that current source. Then I'm going to insert the correct value for the current source, which would be the voltage divided by the resistance. Remember the the rule is VOC, the open circuit voltage, equals the short circuit current, ISC, times the resistance. So in this case, I'm trying to find the short circuit current to use, and that would be the open circuit voltage, 4 volts, divided by the 8 ohm resistance. So that would be half an amp. So I click here and put in half an amp. And now I need to put this resistor in parallel with that current source. But you may notice there's no room to do that on the editing grid. So that's why we now have these new features available here where we can shift the circuit or we can stretch it to make more room. So for example, I can shift the circuit to the right on the editing grid, which is represented by these little gray dots you see here in the background. And now that'll give me room to put that resistor. Once I've started transforming a source, I'm allowed to drag the source around if I need to just by uh, clicking on it with the mouse and dragging or I can drag the passive element. In this case, I'm going to leave the source alone, which is in fact something you can always do. Drag the passive element to a new position. Uh, notice, however, that you cannot drag any other element. In fact, you'll get an error message if you try to do that. Now I need to add some additional wires here to connect everything properly. So I'm going to go to the Add New uh, button, which looks like a little soldering iron there. Click on that, and the only thing it'll allow me to add in this case, is a short. So if I come over here, you notice that a short is now following my cursor around. So if I put it where I want it and click, that will add a short in that position. Then I'm going to go over here, click again, 
adding another short and go down here, click again, adding another short. And then I'll go back to the select mode by clicking over here, which is the normal mode that you're going to be in. Now we can compare this diagram to this one and say, we always want to have these elements that were originally connected to this node and to this node. The new elements have to be connected to the same pair of nodes. And we verify that in fact they are, that the top of the current source and resistor, which are now in parallel, are connected to this node, and their bottoms are connected to this node, which is the node that was connected to one end of the voltage source originally. I also notice that I'll have the correct polarity because, for example, if I open circuit this, this current would flow into here, creating a positive voltage up here and a negative voltage down there, which is what I had here. So the polarity appears to be correct. Therefore, I'm going to click the button to check the source transformation here. And indeed, it tells me that I'm correct. Now, the next step um, would be to combine anything in series and parallel. In fact, it always forces you to do that before you do any source transformations. But in this case, there is still nothing that I can combine. I mean, these two resistors are in parallel, but combining them would eliminate the sought current, which I'm not allowed to do. And in this editing mode, you're not allowed to transform sought variables as you may have done in some of the other exercises, uh, because it really isn't necessary when you're doing source transformations. So instead, what I need to do is to do another source transformation to try to put everything into parallel. So I'm gonna transform this voltage source again into a current source by the same method. And the polarity in this case came out correctly already. And now I need to put the uh, 5 volt divided by the 4 ohms. So that's going to be a 1.25 ampere value there. And now I want to put this resistor now in parallel with that current source. So in this case, I can just drag it up here to be in parallel. And then add some additional wires to connect it properly. And then I'll have to add one down here as well. And notice that, again, I still have one side of this connected to the node that it was originally connected to, and the other side connected to this node, which was the one that the voltage source in series with the resistor was originally connected to. So that is a correct connection. If you do it incorrectly, um, the program will tell you, and that will count as an error, and you get a certain number of errors, as usual, before you would have to give up on the problem, or else you can continue the problem without getting credit for it. But in no, no case will that penalize your grade to make a mistake, because this is a learning activity. Um, what you will have to do is simply to complete the exercise. Then you'll get full credit, um, as is usually the case in Circuit Tutor. So now I'm going to check this source transformation again. And again, that was correct. Now I can simplify by combining these two current sources, which you may notice are now in parallel. And since they're both pointing from this node that's on the bottom and the right towards the node that's on the top and left, they're both pumping charge in the same direction, from this node to this one. And this one also goes from this node to this one. Therefore, they're helping each other, so those values are going to add when I combine them. So I'll click on this value and enter the sum of those two values, which is going to be 1.75 amps. And then I'll delete this current source. In other words, change it to 0 amps or an open circuit. Having done that, as usual, I check the combination that I've made by clicking on this button and that's indicated to be correct. Now I can also combine these two resistors because neither one of them has a SOT current or power. So I'll click over here and put in the, the uh, parallel combination, which is 8 times 4 divided by 8 plus 4, or 12. And so that's going to be uh, 2 and 2 thirds, or 2.67 ohms. And then I'll delete this resistor, since I've just combined it, and again check the combination. Now you see I've got this down to the form of a very simple current divider, and therefore I don't need to do any more editing. And so now I can be done with the editing. And now I would just go ahead and solve this problem as usual. And in this case, it's a single node pair circuit. And I need to specify a SOT branch current. So I would select that. Um, since I'm trying to find I0 here, I'll click on that. That's going to be equal. And then I'm going to use one of these forms. Uh, you have several different forms you can use. Um, I like to use this one myself. So I'm going to put in the value of the current, which is 1.75 amps. And notice that this current is going to go up here, and therefore it's going to go down through this resistor and through this resistor. So that's going to be opposite to the sense of I0, which means I'll need to have a minus sign in the front of that. 
And then you remember when you're using the current divider formula, the resistor that goes in the numerator is actually the other resistor, the one that you're not interested in the current of. So that would be the 2.67. And then that'll go in the bottom. We put the sum of both of those resistors, the 2.67 and the 4 ohms. And then we'll check that. That is correct. Um, I'm done with all the equations I need in this case. And I simply need to enter the numerical value. Um, of course, you won't have this little cheat button, but that'll help me do the math quickly. Um, so if you did your calculator, you would uh, uh, get the same value, hopefully. Uh, we'll check that. And again, that's correct. And there we finished the problem.